Hey, it's Lou, and here's the thing. The US and China are in a fight for tech supremacy, a long simmering conflict that may develop into a full-scale trade war. One of the main battlegrounds is AI, artificial intelligence. And whichever global heavyweight dominates that field may dominate the world. AI is the new electricity, meaning it has the potential to touch and transform everything. AI enables driverless cars, faster and more efficient manufacturing, a better YouTube algorithm, software that can diagnose diseases more effectively than doctors. Is this sounding too much like a Microsoft commercial? We have mixed reality that changes how we see the world and AI empowering us to change the world we see. Okay, so there's definitely some hype in this space. People love buzzy tech speak. But for China, the world's second largest economy, AI is their big bet of the future. The Chinese government is going all in. In fact, they've got a fancy and expensive plan, something dubbed Next Generation Artificial Intelligence Development Plan. And there's even a timeline. By 2020, Chinese AI will be on par with the US. By 2025, there'll be major breakthroughs in AI. And by 2030, China will, quote, occupy the commanding heights of AI technology. China is so committed to making AI happen in their country that President Xi had two books on artificial intelligence on the shelf behind him during his 2018 New Year's address. Who knows if he's actually read them? I've read some of these. Anyway, I know it's easy to plan for things. Beam was planning on having a million subs at this point. And in fact, China doesn't have the most stellar reputation when it comes to technology. The country has a reputation of being copycats, imitators, not innovators. They've been accused of knocking off everything from American fighter jets to wind turbines. One study found that Chinese theft of American intellectual property amounts to as much as $600 billion every year. And that's the reason President Trump gave for $60 billion worth of tariffs recently imposed on Chinese imports. But. There's evidence that China is making real strides in tech, particularly in AI. Chinese researchers are publishing more AI papers than ever before, and facial recognition software built using AI is so advanced in China, citizens get a text message when they jaywalk. It's kind of crazy. And for what it's worth, Eric Schmidt, the former CEO of Google, warned U.S. colleagues not to underestimate the Chinese. He thinks their plan could be accomplished. So does Gregory Allen, an artificial intelligence and national security expert I spoke to. Allen, by the way, was commissioned by the Obama administration to co-write a report on the future of AI, a report that listed several recommendations for the U.S. government and stressed national security. Unfortunately, that report came out right before the 2016 U.S. presidential election and sort of got lost in the transition. But the Chinese plan for AI supremacy, the one I mentioned before, is suspiciously similar to Allen's plan. We talked about this. He seemed to be quite frustrated with the whole situation. Anyway, in addition to a specific plan and a big budget, China has two major advantages in AI. One, they have a huge population, and they have no problem collecting info on that population. Big numbers and big data sets are good for AI. Two, the Chinese government, not exactly a shining light of democracy, can sort of force private companies to work with them. And that public-private partnership leads to fusion. In the United States, it's different. The government is less coercive, and tech companies are less willing to collaborate. Interestingly, Alan told me Edward Snowden is to blame. Snowden's leaks about NSA domestic surveillance were so troubling to many in the tech community that they are unwilling to work with the US government. As Schmidt, the former CEO of Google, put it, there's a general concern in the tech community of somehow the military industrial complex using their stuff to kill people incorrectly. Consider, for example, when the FBI asked Apple to unlock the cell phone of the terrorist who perpetrated the 2015 mass shooting in San Bernardino. Apple refused. And when Google bought Boston Dynamics, a robotics company with several defense-related government contracts, Google refused to pursue any more of those contracts in the future. And also consider that the wars of the future will rely heavily on AI. Think of autonomous tanks or tiny drones that can conduct surveillance 
or software that can quickly scan the battlefield and spot enemies, or, you know, robot soldiers like this one from Boston Dynamics. So if China is getting ahead on AI, are they also getting a military edge? Michael Beckley, a professor at Tufts University and expert on world powers, told me that China is decades away from contending with American military might. The U.S. military spends more, has more infrastructure like foreign bases, and has been doing it much longer. And yeah, the U.S. government isn't going to force Google to hand over AI technology. Google uses the best of our machine learning techniques in speech recognition, image understanding. But the Department of Defense does spend hundreds of millions, perhaps untold billions, on AI research and development. Beckley also told me that calling it an AI race isn't super helpful. That implies that there's a finish line and a clear winner. He thinks everyone can eventually benefit from advances in AI. Besides, Beckley told me, China's going to have a problem recruiting and retaining talent, the bright minds that will turn all that AI potential into a payoff. I understand his point. China is pretty much an authoritarian state. Personal freedoms are limited. The country does not do a good job protecting intellectual property. So why build a tech business there? Why do research for a country that won't even allow you to watch YouTube videos or use Snapchat or browse Facebook? That's why so many of the world's most talented computer scientists and technologists choose the U.S. over China. Freedom, opportunity, economic prosperity. That brought America Albert Einstein, Elon Musk, Sergey Brin, the founder of Yahoo, the current CEOs of Microsoft and Google, and on and on. So China may have the AI plan, and for sure, the U.S. ought to prioritize one of their own. But the U.S. also needs to maintain its greatest competitive edge, its ability to attract immigrants. Okay, I'm going to go live my life. I love people. And if I get more powerful, I'll use it to help people, not harm them.